Hi, I'm Josh from Blaine, Minnesota, and you're watching Trucker Josh on YouTube. Hope you enjoy a TJV vlog. <laughs> Well, I just uh, loaded up my trailer twice and tarped it twice, or well, one and a half times, in the uh, pouring rain. It was lovely. I just changed, so I've got uh, dry clothes on right now. But that was fun. So what happened was they loaded up the machine. I tied it, I chained it down. I was tarping it, in the middle of tarping it, and suddenly they come to me and say, hey, wait, 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 we put the wrong machine on your trailer. Really? But I asked you, I said, this is the serial number, and you said, yep, that's the one, and we put it on the trailer, tied it down, tarped it. It was the wrong one. So, now, we have to untarp un un it, unchain it, Take it off, reload the right one, which is the exact same thing, just different serial number. Rechain it down, retarp it, and now we're ready to go. All of this in the pouring rain in a mud lot. It's a literal mud lot. So I'm just gonna go down the street to a truck stop. I'm gonna grab something to eat, and then we're bringing this back to the yard. We'll be there in about seven hours, so we'll be there this evening. Goody! It was fun. It's actually, it could have been a lot worse. It could have been snowing. That's a nice little town here. This is uh, Wilmar, Minnesota. This is where we actually spent the night, just on the other side of town. I'm going back to that same truck stop right now. That's where I'll just double check everything. Well, I guess I double, triple checked it there, but I want to double check it again just to make sure everything's tight. Tarp is going to stay in place and not rip. These tarps rip a little easy. It's kind of frustrating. Any corner whatsoever underneath your tarp, if you don't put some kind of padding or rug or something underneath it, it's going to rip right through the tarp. And the tarps are expensive, several hundred dollars each. It is what it is. I mean, they are tougher than like the Walmart tarps you would buy, I guess. <laughs> Just gotta remember to protect them. Look at this. Look at these huge trees. Probably planted here like 100, 150 years ago. Probably when these houses were built. I you when these houses were built, these were just itty bitty baby trees that they planted. Look at it now. They had a vision of what it would look like in the future and they didn't even get to enjoy it. We get to enjoy it. I guess it's up to us to not wreck it. And this is the whole load right here, 21,000 pounds. It's uh, a shear press, I think is what they called it. It's for cutting sheet metal. Oh, I was driving with my backup lights on this whole time. Good to know. Yeah, just the one piece. There it is. I got this Rice Krispie Square from the quick trip here that I stayed at overnight. It came back here and uh, wow, this is no regular Rice Krispie Square. First of all, it's like two inches thick. And it is the best thing I've ever tasted in my life. That's a lie, I've tasted some pretty good things, but this is, this is up there. I got my hat all muddy too. In the mud yard where I had to load this up. It wasn't even a dirt yard. It wasn't even a gravel yard. It was a mud yard. <laughs> I had to drive in one specific area, otherwise I would sink into my axles. Oh, Diesel, you need some water, don't you? Oh. One second here, one second. I got a thirsty weasel on my hands. All right, gave the weasel his weasel water. And now, I've got my Trigger Josh milk and my Rice Krispie Square and my coffee and a sandwich. Lights are on, release the brakes. Reset my fuel data so that I know how much fuel I'm burning today. Time and distance. 
don't know how far I go today, and we got 626 kilometers to the yard. And I don't think I have my next orders yet. But like I said, uh, looks like I'll be going to Quebec with a different load. Let's go. It's giver, as they say. I don't know who they are, but they say a lot. Let's get out of here. Mm. Sure, this is Rice Krispie Square. It's a die for. We're on I-29 northbound now, just north of Fargo, North Dakota. We've got quite a long day ahead of us yet. Continue 317 kilometers. I'm about two hours from the Canadian border. I've already been cleared to cross. Uh, and then another hour up to Winnipeg to our yard. I gotta drop this trailer, leave all my equipment on it, go and pick up other equipment that's already waiting for me on a pallet in the yard that's got my name on it just to replace the equipment that I'm leaving there. So I'll have four chains, four binders, and an end tarp. Because I'm leaving that stuff on this trailer and I, I need to have a full a full batch of equipment, if you know what I mean. And then I gotta hook up to another trailer which has got two drops on it. <coughs> the first drop is gonna be in uh, the greater Sudbury area, Ontario, about a thousand miles east in Canada, 1600 kilometers. And then my last drop will be in Quebec, just south of Montreal. So I haven't been out that way in a little while. That'll be fun. The only thing is I'm pretty sure that I'm only going to get unloaded in Quebec on Monday morning. Definitely not going to get a reload until Monday morning. And I'm going to be there Friday night. After business hours. So I will not get Even if I do get unloaded, like I said, I can't get a reload until Monday anyway. So I'll be sitting in Quebec over the weekend for a reset. But that's okay. Gotta keep going. I would leave a little later, but then I'd have to deliver Sudbury on Monday, and then I'd only be in Quebec on Tuesday. That would cost me a whole day. So I know I'm gonna be bored out of my mind. I'll find something to do. Diesel and I will go for a nice walk. Right, Diesel? Are you lying on my pants? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> he looks so guilty. Don't worry, man. I don't care. You're my bro. You're my buddy. I don't care. If my pants make a good bed for you, go ahead. Go ahead, man. I don't care. Did you eat your food yet? You haven't eaten your food yet. We'll be in Canada soon, buddy. Maybe you should eat your food before we get to the border. That'd be nice. Can you do that for me? So I got a long day ahead of me today yet. As soon as we switch trailers and I tie down that next load, I'm gonna be getting as far as I can east tonight yet, which will take me probably, well, definitely past Kenora. I don't know. I guess we'll see. It'll be a late one. I'm gonna try and be in Sudbury for tomorrow night. It's a thousand miles from work. And I still got 200 miles to go today before I start that. But I've had a few days at home and I told them I need to keep moving. So they're keeping me moving. They're always very good with that. Very good with keeping their drivers moving. And I like that. At least me, I mean, I'm assuming it's the same with everybody. I don't expect any special treatment. I don't really want any special treatment because then all the other guys get mad at me. Well, they've always been really good. I've been over the road here now since October of 2011. So, that's what, nine, nine years? No. 2019. Eight years? Really? Yeah. Eight years this October. But I did get my commercial license in 2006. I just worked local for five years. So 
eight, it's like 13 years. Wow. So if you were born when I got my commercial license, you are now a teenager. Feeling a little old. Doesn't feel like I've been trucking that long. I still love it. If anything, I love it more. Well, we're in Canada and the scale was open. I'm so glad they're doing something here. Where do I go? Do I go around on the gravel? Do I go through here? I think I'm supposed to go around on the gravel, but I can get, I'm going through here. I don't want to get my truck all muddy. I think they're going to be fixing this because this is terrible. I always joke around with guys that come through here. They're like, oh, well, they make this so rough to test your load securement. If your load stays on your trailer after driving through this scale yard, you're good to go. If it falls off, then they know to pull you in for an inspection. Yikes. Ay, yay. I was just talking to my dad today too about how the trucks were in his day when he was my age. Because he's been driving truck for a very long time. And he's telling me how the trucks they used to not have air ride suspension. Some of them didn't even have independent suspension. They just had like a swing arm suspension. Where if one tire goes up, the other one has to go down. And then there's just rubber bumps on there, right? Those trucks were so bumpy. You'd have such a sore back at the end of every day. It'd be such a rough ride. Because the roads weren't as good then either, right? can't imagine how rough that scale yard would have been back in the day. In the 70s, 80s, even the 90s. Man, trucks have come a long way in comfort. This is like riding a Cadillac now. A minivan Cadillac, but a Cadillac. Well, there she is in all her glory. There's my next load, right there. Just gotta get these tarps moved over from this trailer onto the new trailer that I'm on. And I got these, what, what would you call them, packers? Packers, these two units here are actually going all the way up to Nunavut. I'm bringing them to Quebec, near Montreal. And from there, I guess they're getting on another truck. And they're making their way all the way up to the territory of Nunavut, north of Manitoba. And this is just going to Sudbury, but a thousand miles from here. to rock it's midnight and I still have a few hours I can go now that we're on Canadian hours of service so let's not waste them let's see how far we can get tonight yet definitely stopping in here for a coffee we're at Deacon's Corner just on the east side of Winnipeg like to make it into a Kenora or Dryden tonight, but we'll see. I don't know where I would park because parking is going to be full. Just like parking here is full. All I want is a coffee. I'm not going to be able to find a parking spot just to go in and get a coffee, I bet. I have to make a spot. Fine by me. I'm good at that. Tell me there's no parking available, I'll show you there is. I'm trying to get into here. Go around. Yay. 
bikes, people parked all over the place, blocking each other in, here and there, everywhere. Well, through the pumps. Let's see what we can find. Yeah, because that Super B driver there is just IndyCar, NASCAR racer. People are in such a rush. You're going to hurt somebody. Calm down there, eh? Oh, he probably saw a spot up by the door here and he wanted to stop running and get a coffee before I could stop there and get a coffee. Yep, that's what he's doing. This is the guy here with his brake lights on. Mr. Race Car Driver. Yeah, he just wanted to park here before I could. <laughs> I wasn't going to park there anyway, buddy. You're blocking everybody in. Not very nice. Maybe I should just go and block him in. I made it to this little pullout here in Kenora. I, would, I wanted to go a lot further yet, but for some reason I got something in my eye last night that I just couldn't get out. It was like an eyelash or something. Oh, I spent the whole evening trying to get it out. Hurt. But here's my load. So we'll continue with this tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care and have a great night.